This is Oklahoma Inside Out, a weekly broadcast of Cimarron Alliance that focuses on the issues, culture, and people important to LGBT Oklahomans. And now, here's your host for Oklahoma Inside Out, Scott J. Hamilton. Welcome to Oklahoma Inside Out today. This is the second episode that we're broadcasting from the Cimarron Alliance Equality Center. And we're still working through some challenges, just getting all of our equipment in place and setting up our studio. As a matter of fact, every day we find something else that we need or that we can't find. And it's really like when you move into a new home, everything is all ready and you've had a long day and you're ready to go to bed that first night and you realize, oh no, we forgot. We have no curtains on the windows. But we're working through those kinds of things and it's a very exciting time for us here and it's an exciting time for Oklahoma City. Our guest today is a man who's largely responsible for the single largest event held in Oklahoma City. It's a time when all of us come together and celebrate and I know that you're going to be very very happy that you tuned in today. We'll be back to visit with him after we take a quick break with a word from our sponsor. This edition of Oklahoma Inside Out is made possible through the generosity of friends and supporters like you. To support this program and the advancement of equal rights for LGBT Oklahomans, please consider making a generous gift today at CimarronAlliance.org. Welcome back to Oklahoma Inside Out. I said a moment ago that we're going to be talking about the the largest event that takes place in Oklahoma City. And by that, we mean the largest outdoor event and certainly the largest parade. We're talking, of course, about the LGBT Pride Parade, and that's coming up in May. Our guest today in studio is the president of OKC Pride, Jeremy Kreitz. Jeremy, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be here. Wow. Does it seem like it's already Pride time? I mean, you, you all have been working on this for months and months and months. I remember attending one of the early planning meetings, and it was, uh, it was still warm weather last year. And now we're, we're almost ready for Pride. Absolutely. It's just around the corner. So let's start, just so everyone is clear, uh, give us the dates for, for Pride Weekend. All right, so OKC Pride will be taking place on Friday, May 17th through Sunday, May 19th. Okay, let's let's break that down. Friday, um, the, the, the first night of the weekend, that starts with what? So on Friday, we're starting with a block party on 39th Street. We will have a couple of different things going on. Uh, first off, the street will be blocked, so it really will be a street party. Um, we will be having a crawfish boil. Uh, up at the boom, there will also be uh, a DJ there. Um, down at the other end, towards Angles, we'll have a stage with live entertainment. Um, everything ranging from drag queens to musical performances to dance troops, comedians, and um, we'll just have um, a lot of things go on. Hope that uh, folks come out and enjoy themselves. And w- what time does that start on Friday? It starts at 7 p.m. and we'll go through 11 p.m. Okay. So, I mean, that, that's perfect. People can come and they can hang out, uh, party in the street, and if they want to stay and go to a club, they, they certainly can. Absolutely. They can go in and out, and uh, we encourage everybody to just uh, make the rounds and uh, check out what each of the establishments has going on. Now, you, you said make the rounds. Let's talk a little bit about how that's going to work logistically. You said the streets will be closed off? <clears throat> Correct. Pardon me, where where, uh, where do we enter the, 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 the party? Well, um, only 39th Street will be blocked, so from Penn down to around the boom. Okay. So you can still get in there on the I-44 service road. I believe that's 40th Street. Um, you'll still be able to come in from the back um, around Young's Boulevard. And... Um, Angles parking lot will not be open, but other than that, um, you can park as usual. Okay. And wh- is there a cost associated with a block party? It is absolutely free, just like really? all of our events. Oh, that's awesome. That's that's really something. So that's Friday evening, and mm-hmm. then let's talk a, a little bit about Saturday. Saturday's a full day. We're really excited about Saturday. Uh, Saturday will kick off our festival downtown with a Love is Love marriage equality rally and mass commitment ceremony that starts at 11 a.m. at the myriad gardens 
And it, we're really excited about this opportunity to showcase our LGBT couples who call Oklahoma home. And we think it's a great opportunity to educate the public to the fact that we have LGBT families here that have been together for decades, who have children, and we're just a part of normal everyday life, right? That's part of our theme this year. It's the new normal. So uh, this the, the marriage equality event takes place at 11. And what time does the festival actually open? Uh, the festival also opens at 11. Okay. And um, it'll be there on Film Row, which is at uh, Sheridan and Lee. So it's two blocks west of the Devon Tower. And uh, we're really excited about all of the changes that have happened down there just since last year. Well, there's certainly more parking than there was last year because there's less road construction, right? Absolutely. It's much easier to get to. Uh, but, but you'll also find that several of the buildings have been restored, and um, there's even more down there than there was last year. You know, I, I know that there was a, a lot of controversy surrounding the move of the festival downtown, but if last year was any indication... I think it was really smart because there's more room for people to move through. It's uh, easy access from just about anywhere in the city. And so I'm anxious to see this year. Is it going to be a larger festival in terms of uh, vendors than, than last year? Absolutely. Um, we'll have more vendors this year. Um, it'll be a larger space. We've actually had to increase uh, the size of the festival. It will include a 1,000 square foot uh, children's activity tent with arts and crafts, games and activities. I believe we've got three different organizations coming out and doing uh, pet adoptions. We'll have pet contests. And we're really hoping to kind of bring everybody together. We, that's our family-friendly um, event. And that includes children. That includes pets. Um, that includes really everybody, including our straight allies. So that's, that's from 11 until what time, Jeremy? 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, so it really is a full day then. It sure uh, is. is. Is there entertainment as a part of the festival? Absolutely. We've got a great mix of local artists. We have dance troops. Um, we've got our entire lineup actually on our website at okcpride.org slash pride2013. Awesome. Well, I want to talk uh, when we come back uh, more about the festival and certainly about the parade because there are some changes this year. Yes. And uh, many of the, of the things that we're seeing in terms of changes are directly related to suggestions and input from the community. So you, you all have done a great job in listening. And uh, we'll talk more about how that's all going to unfold on a very wonderful weekend. Our guest today is Jeremy Kreitz. You're listening to Oklahoma Inside Out. Hi, I'm David Macy, a board member of the Cimarron Alliance, and I'm asking for your help. We work every single day to make life better for gay Oklahomans, now and for generations to come. But we can't do it without you. Please consider making a gift of just $20 a month to the Cimarron Alliance and be a part of our march toward equality. Visit www.cimarronalliance.org today and make your pledge. It's a gift you can feel good about giving. It's a brand new year, and the Oklahoma Observer has a brand new look. We asked our readers what they wanted, and we've given it to them. Now, the Oklahoma Observer arrives in your mailbox in a convenient magazine format. That means more room for more stories that are important to you. What's more, our online version at www.okobserver.net is updated throughout the day so you have instant access to the news, analysis, and in-depth reporting that you just can't find anywhere else. The legislature will soon be in session, and you can count on the Oklahoma Observer to be your eyes and ears at the Capitol and beyond. If you're a progressive Oklahoman, you owe it to yourself to be informed about issues and legislation that impact you, your family, and the LGBT community. Visit www.okobserver.net today. Our only agenda is to provide critical news to critical thinkers. Welcome back to Oklahoma Inside Out. We're visiting today with Jeremy Kreitz, who is the president of OKC Pride. Jeremy, let's... Um, we're going to go back and talk about the festival in a moment, but let's talk first about the parade, which takes place on Sunday. That's correct. And there's a new time this year. Yes, the parade will step off, step off at 4 p.m. this year instead of 6 p.m. Uh, we got a lot of feedback from folks, especially those with kids, that by the time uh, the parade came through and was finished and got back to their car, it would be 9 o'clock before they got home. 
you have school and work the next day. And uh, so we responded to that by moving the date up two hours to four o'clock. Um, now that we're in May and it's not so hot, mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping that um, you know folks will be able to enjoy that and um, that it'll work out better for everyone. Now, the theme uh, for the parade is the new normal. That's correct. What does that mean to you? The new normal, you know, we envision being in an Oklahoma where people are treated with dignity and respect and have equality regardless of their sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, race, really anything. We are all people and um, that's the world that we are working towards. Um, the fact that especially LGBT people are a part of everyday life. Uh, you'll see us on TV, you'll see us on the streets. We're everywhere. We're at your churches. We're at your workplace. We are everywhere in society. And so that's the message that you want people to, to walk away with and just say, well, these, these are my neighbors. These are my friends. These are my kids. These are my parents. Uh, these are all people that I know. Absolutely. We're hoping to have an event where people from all walks of life can come together and just realize that we share a common humanity. Is there a Grand Marshal this year? Uh, yes, actually. Our Grand Marshal this year is Bob Lemon, and we're very, very honored to have him. He has been a long-term ally of the LGBT community, even before he discovered that he was the father of two gay children, and um, has been a staunch supporter of not only gay rights, but human rights. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's really... That's really an amazing thing when you take someone who um, just believes in people enough to support everyone, and certainly Mr. Lemon does that. So that's that's really an honor that's well bestowed. Congratulations! That's a, that's a great decision, it really is. Um, any any new things in the parade this year that we can look forward to? Uh, absolutely, we are actually complementing the parade with a parade fest this year and so on 39th Street there around the uh, Angles parking lot we will have not only uh, the Pride headquarters will be serving beverages there'll be t-shirts other merchandise there will also be food vendors as well as commercial vendors and uh, we'll have live entertainment from noon to 8 and um, we're just going to make uh, one big festivity out of it. So it, you really could make a day out of this. You could go at noontime and then be there for the parade and then be a part of things after the parade. What, what's actually happening there after the parade? Uh, so after the parade, the entertainment will continue. Um, one thing that I do want to make sure that people know is that there is a family-friendly area along the parade route, and that is by the Expressions Community Center. They're at the intersection of 39th and Young's and um, just let people know that uh, that's a place they can take their families, there will be things for children to do, and uh, it's a safe place where they can go and feel comfortable. And um, we wanna make sure that Pride is as inclusive as possible. Uh, we realize that the LGBT community is just as diverse as any other, and uh, we are trying to cater to everyone and make sure that there's a place for everyone at Pride. So let's talk about, for those folks who perhaps have never been to an LGBT Pride Parade in Oklahoma City, let's talk about the route. Where does it start and, and how does it go and where does it wind up? Sure. Um, the parade lines up uh, where it always has on Classen and 36th there by Memorial Park. And uh, when the parade steps off, it will go north on Classen and then it'll turn west onto 39th Street. And, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, that last crest of 39th Street is where the original 500 or so marchers back in 87 uh, confronted the uh, Ku Klux Klan, who immediately scattered. And that was um, the first OKC Pride Parade 26 years ago. 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it has grown every year. Mm -hmm. And last year's parade was a wonderful parade, despite some very, very scary weather earlier <laughs> in the day. Um, I, I'm really excited about it this year because I think that you and your your team, your your board, you've really, as I said a moment ago, done a great job in listening to the community. You have sought input, uh, ideas from folks, and really done a very good job into to incorporating those together. So congratulations on that, Jeremy. Your your leadership is uh, paying off. I think for all of us. Well, thank you. 
like I said before, I do I do want to spend some more time talking about the festival because um, that's a that's a big day and and again like you said we can bring families there um, and certainly anyone in in the metro area is welcome to come. We we hope to see lots of folks there. Absolutely. But I'd like to find out who who some of the exhibitors will be, some of the things that are happening. Maybe even take a look at some of the entertainers. And we'll do that when we come back after this short break. Our guest today on Oklahoma Inside Out is Jeremy Kreitz. We'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Lorette Taylor, past chair of Cimarron Alliance. I joined the board because I believe in the vision and the work of this organization. We're working every day listening to the concerns of our community and helping to address those very concerns. I hope you will consider supporting Cimarron with a gift. Even $10 a month will help. Working together, we really can achieve equality for all gay Oklahomans. Please visit www.cimarronalliance.org and make your gift today. It's a brand new year and the Oklahoma Observer has a brand new look. We asked our readers what they wanted, and we've given it to them. Now, the Oklahoma Observer arrives in your mailbox in a convenient magazine format. That means more room for more stories that are important to you. What's more, our online version at www.okobserver.net is updated throughout the day so you have instant access to the news, analysis, and in-depth reporting that you just can't find anywhere else. The legislature will soon be in session, and you can count on the Oklahoma Observer to be your eyes and ears at the Capitol and beyond. If you're a progressive Oklahoman, you owe it to yourself to be informed about issues and legislation that impact you, your family, and the LGBT community. Visit www.okobserver.net today. Our only agenda is to provide critical news to critical thinkers. I'm Scott J. Hamilton. You're listening to Oklahoma Inside Out, and our guest today is Jeremy Kreitz, the president of OKC Pride. Just before the break, we we really kind of explored Sunday what's happening, but let's jump back to Saturday. Sure. Um, The marriage event takes place at 11, you said, and then the festival opens at 11. Yes. What kind of exhibitors do you have this year? Uh, We have all kinds of exhibitors. We'll have all kinds of pride merchandise. Um, There will be local nonprofit organizations, a lot of great ones that... um, really offer a wonderful opportunity to be involved with, a chance to uh, work with the community. Um, we'll also have commercial vendors, um, so some of our sponsors, for example, um, Dell and the Gailey, and um, just a real good mix of folks, uh, as well as, like I mentioned before, the pet adoptions and uh, things for children. Will there be, be food available at the festival? There will be food available at the festival. What, what are you making? <laughs> I promise it's all healthy. Okay. okay yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be a festival if everything was healthy, would it? That's right. It is Oklahoma, and I imagine there will be more than enough fried goodies for you. If if folks are are coming uh, with and uh, not really familiar with downtown Oklahoma City, how how do they get to Film Row? Well, now that the construction downtown is gone. Um, If you're coming from I-40, then you can take the western exit, and uh, once you hit Sheridan, you can uh, turn east, and you're about a quarter mile from Mm -hmm. Film Row. Um, If you're coming from north of the city, I recommend that you take Classen, and from Classen, you can turn east onto Sheridan, and you'll run right into Film Row. Uh, We will have another parking map, uh, like we did last year, available, and we'll put that on our website. Uh, last year we had about 700 free parking spots. This year we'll have even more. Good. And uh, so don't worry about uh, being able to find a parking spot or paying an arm and a leg. Uh, we've got that taken care of for you. Yeah, yeah, I will say this. Uh, I should just point out that the Cimarron Alliance Equality Center will be open that weekend. And so if folks want to carpool uh, either, either to the festival or to the parade or to the block party Friday night, they can park here and, and that would help alleviate some of the congestion downtown so that's an option for folks. fantastic give us your website again it is www.okcpride.org and your facebook page you're also very active on facebook yes uh at facebook you'll find us at okc pride fan and that's where we can get all the information on who is who's performing when and um all the details like hour by hour for 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 the festival, will it, do you have a lineup for the entertainers throughout the day? 
You know what? Uh, I know that the lineup is on our website, but we will have that put on Facebook, and folks can see exactly what's going on hour by hour. Oh, that's that's really amazing. I, I tell you, again, congratulations on all of the hard work, and I know you're going to be ready for a vacation after Pride this year, but, <laughs> but Jeremy, in, in all sincerity, I am grateful on behalf of all of us in the community for the work that you're doing, because it helps to not just galvanize us, but also to, to put a good face on the community for the rest of the state to see uh, and to understand, as you pointed out, that we are we're part of society here and, and very much involved in everything. So congratulations. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time. We're, we're actually going to be doing a, a video version of Oklahoma Inside Out from the festival on Saturday. So we'll be Great. talking to lots of folks there like we did last year. But just keep us informed. We'll keep passing the word along. And I know that you're, you've got to run out of here with lots to do. But thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you for having me. It's really been an honor and we are all lucky to have some uh, organizations like yours. Bless your heart. Thank you. Our guest today has been Jeremy Kreitz, the president of OKC Pride, and it's going to be an amazing time this May, so get ready to celebrate Pride in a big way. Our producer is Chris Moyer. Our announcer is Lisa Pizzeri. Summer on Alliance board co-chairs are Catherine Primus and Randall Marsh. From all of us at Oklahoma Inside Out, and Cibarot Alliance. I'm Scott J. Hamilton, thanking you for joining us, and until next time, hang on to the vision of a fair and just Oklahoma. Thank you, Oklahoma City, for all you do in supporting Cimarron. We're here for you, and we appreciate you being here for us. Oklahoma Inside Out is a production of Cimarron Alliance, Central Oklahoma's preeminent LGBT advocacy and education organization. If you have a topic you would like to hear discussed or a person who you would like to hear interviewed, please call 405-495-9300 or email oklahomainsideout at cimarronalliance.org. Please feel free to share the link to this broadcast with your friends. 